Hey, Fidelity Fortune Hunters, Tom Wilmot. As I promised, we're going to uh, take a quick peek at the Fibonacci tool in Fidelity Active Trader Pro. But in order to do that, I really have to show you how it works in two different directions by using my MetaTrader charts. And in this particular case, we have a, a chart of the Euro USD up. I'm going to give you a demonstration of Fibonacci here, and then we're going to translate over into the Fidelity ATP platform to see what benefits and what limitations the tool has in that environment. So if this is of interest, that's great. Hold on to your hat. We'll get started right after this. Okay, friends, uh, the purpose of the Fibonacci tool is not so much to uh, measure exact entry uh, levels. It is more to find out where your uh, support and resistance might uh, work out to be. And in particular, I find it very helpful for finding out where my target price ought to go. Uh, and so if you'll just bear with me here, what we are seeing in front of you is a Euro USD chart. And I'm using the MetaTrader platform, not because I want to convince you to trade uh, Forex. Heaven for friend, you should be interested in currencies when you're ATP bigots and fans. But let's uh, take a quick peek at how you would use the Fibonacci tool because in MetaTrader it's actually more powerful than in Fidelity. It goes in two directions. Let me show you what that means. Uh, we can either have uh, retracements or extensions and let's see where they are. We'll take the Fibonacci tool and we'll left click and then drag it to here. We'll go in this range. We just picked this one because it looks like it was a nice uh, kind of a move uh, to the north here, right? One kind of a, a stretch when we have that. What you'll find oftentimes is that the retracement, uh, when they say retracement in a Fibonacci world, it comes back either into, say, the 50% level. That means 50% of this move. Uh, the other one that you can find when the, when the uh, uh, price is uh, moving rather rapidly in a, in a trend would be 38.2. And then the uh, golden uh, number, of course, is 68.1 or 168. Uh, 161.8. Those are the uh, Fibonacci numbers that uh, people use most often. Now, what you'll find here is that we had a move. We had a pullback into the bands, probably on our chart and Fidelity. Now we have this consolidation in between these three lines. In the tool, uh, you can add more lines here. I keep it to the 38, the 50, and the 61.8. Then it came back up and tested the high. You can see it pulled back a little bit. And the levels you want to consider for future use would be the 127. Okay, the 127. Let me move this over for you. The 127, which at this level is a dollar and 21 cents for every euro, or the 1618, and that's this level up here, which is 121.46, uh, which is about 25 pips higher. And notice that it did get to this level eventually. It took three days. This is a 30 minute chart. Uh, this was the 9th of February, the 10th of February, and then we finished up just now today on the 11th, which is a Thursday. And so uh, I, I just wanted to show that this is the way you would uh, take a look at it. Up, retracement, and extension. Uh, and then pull back and then getting to finally the target extension here. And you would expect not to go short in this area necessarily. What you would want to assume is that this is a temporary target and that it may, may be a very convenient place for you to take some profits. The 127 is less reliable about that, but it is often, and we'll see over in, uh, in Fidelity ATP when we get to a couple of samples, we'll see that it often is. Uh, if the market is either moving higher more slowly or or if it's reached a peak and it's just trying to, you know, eke out another move to the north, you'll find that the 127 uh, is more useful. Okay, now the reason I point this out, and let's see if we can find one that's been going down, the Euro, uh, Euro there's a great opportunity for us here, and I'm going to go over and change another one of my, into another one of my, um, Templates over here on this side of the page here. Let me come down and, and just change this around so we don't confuse our, ourselves with this. Now, the point of this 
is that you can uh, you can have a, you can have a retracement to the downside and you can also have a reverse Fibonacci. Take a look at this. If we were to go here and up to this move here, what you would find is that in some cases, it falls apart, okay? It comes down, it does not hold at the 618. It does not hold at the 50%. It keeps on going. And notice that the reverse is also true, the 127, and then it falls down here, and it even goes so far as two times. And that means this distance times two uh, is the uh, range of it. And then it just kept falling. So the dollar was very weak over the course of the early part of February uh, on a daily basis. So I wanted to show you that instead of it going here, pulling back, and then moving higher into an extension, it also has an opportunity to come back and retrace to this direction. And notice how the 127 in this case was the place it stabilized at the end of that trading day. Now, this is the tool that we will find in Fidelity. We have retracements and this kind of a move, but we Fidelity doesn't have allow you to put in numbers that will allow you to do an extension. And that's kind of limiting, but still we'll find there's some opportunity uh, to use the Fibonacci tool successfully. And let me show you that just after this quick minute. Okay, guys, here we are over in more familiar territory. Obviously, this is uh, the Fidelity platform, the ATP. I put the queues up here because it's uh, provided some interesting opportunities for us. The first thing I'd like to point out is you can do this in any time frame. I think I had a 30-minute chart up on the other uh, chart. Uh, this particular uh, chart is a 78-minute chart. And notice we have our... Uh, our ability down here with this uh, graphic to be able to make fewer or thicker candles. So let's go down and, and test this out here, and we're going to open this up a little bit. Also, and then I'll get rid of this so it's clear. Then we'll come up here to settings, because now that we know it's the cues, we're going to take our opacity and get rid of that so it's not so confusing to us all the time you have to hit apply. Now that darkens that, so it's a little clearer in how to use it, okay? Now the the uh, tools that you'll use, the drawing tools, it's not an indicator, it's a drawing tool. The indicators are listed here, of course, and you can see them all anytime. Now, but if we come over to the drawing tools, over in this area here, you'll find the Fibonacci re retracement. Uh, this is a Fibonacci time zones uh, tool, and you can try that out and experiment with it as well. It would have the same numbers, the 127, the, the retracements to, into the 61.8 range and so forth, and uh, then it would have some extensions as well. But let's play with this one for the time being. And what we're going to do, once we click on it, if we left click, let's take this at the top of this line and let's come down and to the bottom of this move right here, okay? Now, one of the things that I really knock about the Fidelity platform is that you can't have some default color. So every time you put this tool on, you got to go change things around, okay? So now here's what we will do. You left click on one of the uh, buttons. Let's make it a yellow. So it's clearer to see. The line styles are fine. I would like it to snap to price. I don't want the 23.6. I'm going to remove that selected value. Notice I still have the 38, the 50, and the 61.8 in here. And then 100. Now if you want to add one, the problem here is that you can't add the extension uh, in in, a, in in the B direction, as it were, uh, because you can't put in negative numbers. But we can add 1, 2, 7, okay? Add value, and then you have to apply, okay? Now what we find is that we've come from this level here, and what we'll go up and we'll tick it to the top of the chart. We'll tick this to the bottom of this uh, candle here. And notice how we came exactly to the 127 with our cues over this period of time since we had the pull back down. Now see what happened here as we came down to the, uh, the 38. It's reversed, you can see. Up, but then it failed and it fell back down and it created this bottom before it began to move higher. I think it's probably wise to wait until you see this all develop 
Um, I don't think it's usually safe to get in a long trade below this 38 line. And I think probably waiting until you get into here and maybe a pullback into the bands would give you an opportunity to catch this move, which would be from 326 up into the 334 range, which is where the 127 is located. Okay, now given that the market has been headed higher for so long, uh, basically the situation is that it was difficult to find a reversal uh, to the downside using the Fibonacci tool. Uh, so let me show you an example of Exxon. Uh, Exxon, of course, uh, has had its problems with energy, especially with the pandemic. And uh, this is now uh, changed to a weekly chart. These things work in uh, lots of different uh, time dimensions. And in fact, I would suggest to you that the longer the time frame, probably the more accurate the numbers will be. Uh, it gets a lot of the noise out of the channel. But in any event, notice that what happened way back in January of 19, we had a push north. We kind of had a triple top area here of resistance up here in the uh, 82 to 85 range. And then we began to fall. And notice that at what I would call an extension down to the, up, up to this level as kind of a move higher fell apart when we simply couldn't clear these levels in the middle here that we've had on tap. Now, I put this in before I, uh, I showed you the chart, but this is what I would propose. And then we fell. And then, it's, of course, we moved into March and, and the pandemic and so forth. Uh, the, the whole stock just fell apart, obviously, as we were uh, headed into the pandemic with reduced travel and airline problems and a variety of other things. OK, so now uh, we we'll notice that we've cracked through the 1618, which I call the 162 in Fibonacci, just to round it off. We have the 200 uh, percent. It, it, it held there for a week, but then it completely collapsed again. And I would just like to show you that sometimes in addition to the 127, let's see, let's put a 127 in. We'll add that value, 127, that is uh, without decimals here for this one. Add value and apply. And notice we did hold here for a little bit before giving way again, okay? Now notice that you could also use doubles. This would be a distance at 200, which is exactly equal to the upside move. And let's just, for chance purposes, let's play around with this. We want to get back on track here and put this back. We're going to go up here. We have to set snap price, and there we go. And now what I'd like to just show you is if you go to 300, which would mean that it moved twice as far to the downside as that move to the upside. We're going to add that value and apply it and look at how perfect that turned out. So once again, I'm saying to you, these are potential target areas and uh, they are uh, not necessarily used for specific entries, uh, maybe for exits because you can expect resistance at these levels because the Fibonacci's are so widely used. Okay, we'll take a break and come back and wrap up in just a second. Okay, fortune hunters, as we begin to wrap up our Fibonacci video here, I'd like to bring to your attention, if you'd like some more information, over on my website, fxfortunehunter.com, and I'll leave this in the description down below. I have in my blog pages a, a Fibonacci video that I did for the 4X, but the levels that I use are all identified there for MetaTrader, and uh, they can be you know, used over here as well. So if you'd like more information or just another quick viewpoint on it, that, uh, that video is available for free over on the website. And uh, please, uh, before we wrap up, don't forget, if you like this material, please subscribe, uh, ask questions, or leave comments down below. We'll try our best to get to them. And uh, we will be uh, wrapping up this uh, three series uh, of videos with a review of the quotes and watch list area, which will be coming up next. So you can see about how to take those uh, uh, new stock ideas that you got from the uh, screener capability and move them into your watch list, but I wanted to get to Fibonacci first today. Okay, one last one, uh, just to, for a quick review, the Russell, uh, the rut, and what I did now to show you, a 78-minute chart. I'm going to try to squeeze it again a little bit just to make it uh, bigger for us to see. We'll get rid of that so it's easy to work with. Now we'll take our drawing tool. We'll come here. 
Fibonacci retracement. Left click on the dot, come down, notice how annoying it is. We have to change the colors again. Darn, darn. Okay, by simply clicking on the button. Sometimes it's very difficult to be able to click that, especially if it's down near a margin area. We'd like to change to yellow. We're going to snap to price. We're going to get rid of the 2360 just to clean the chart up a bit, and we're going to add our value. Uh, we can see very clearly that it's moved past the 127, so let's go to the 162. That would be the 1618 uh, in, in uh, 4x, but we'll round it off here. We have to add the value, and don't forget when you do this, you need to apply it. If you don't apply, it won't come uh, come up on your screen. And, and just to be quick about it too, let's go to 200 and plug that one in as well and see if this helps us. And sure enough, look at this. We have a really neat kind of an approach to things. Uh, haven't been using some funny business stock. It's just the old Russell. And notice again, as I mentioned to you, our move here on a 78-minute chart way back on the 3rd of February, we cleared this area. Your stock could go down here. We've had a crossover of our bands. We move very quickly to the 1618. And now we've come up and touched our 200. And it's probably a point at which things are getting a little toppy in the market. So be cautious here. Usually what will happen is we'll come back and test it one more time with a double top. I found that the tops last longer than the bottoms often. The reversals are more pronounced and, and uh, violent from the bottom up than from the top down. So in any event, uh, I hope this uh, information has been helpful to you. And as I said, please leave a comment. And uh, meanwhile, great luck with your trading. And thanks for watching. See you next time.